Hello, and welcome to the Thomas Built Bus's Julie Driver Training Video. I'm Tom, and today I'll be going over our first all-electric bus. By design, the Julie is very similar to the diesel buses you're used to, but of course, it does have some key differences that we'll go over in this video. So, let's start with a formal introduction to the Julie, and then get into what you need to know to operate it. With green renewable energy becoming increasingly vital to our planet, Thomas Built Buses is driving the industry forward with its all-electric Julie. Powered by Proterra, the industry's leading battery manufacturer, the Julie can hold up to 226 kilowatts of power, and it comes with a standard eight-year battery warranty. The Julie can be charged in less than three and a half hours with a 60 kilowatt DC fast charger, and it boasts a range of up to 138 miles on a single charge, thanks to its industry-leading battery design, which includes a highly efficient two-speed Eaton transmission. The Julie features a regenerative power system. This system can be set to standard regenerative mode or high regenerative mode, both of which capture unused kinetic energy and return it to the batteries, maximizing the Julie's range. Now, let's take a quick look at how the Julie operates emissions-free. The Julie batteries send out direct current, or DC, electrical energy. This reaches the AC-DC inverter, which converts the energy into alternating current. This AC energy reaches the electric motor, which propels the vehicle. The transmission is coupled to a small drive shaft, which is connected to the rear axle differential. The motor and transmission turn the drive shaft, which turns the gearing in the rear axle. This delivers energy to the wheels, which rotate, resulting in the bus moving forward or in reverse. The low voltage system of the Julie is what engages and controls the high voltage system. The low voltage system must maintain an adequate voltage level, and this is protected by the Gigavac switch. And we'll get into that later. Battery storage and other major components on the chassis are powered by high voltage electricity. In fact, the Julie has a 400 volt system, which is far higher than the typical household outlet's 120 volts. Special high voltage cables, which are easily identified by their orange insulation for safety, distribute energy to other high voltage components. The Julie has a high voltage interlock loop, HVIL system, which monitors all the connections between high voltage components. If a component gets disconnected, the bus will notify the driver by displaying a message on the dashboard. So, now that we've gone over the basics, I'll walk you through what to expect when switching from a diesel bus to the Julie. You'll notice a few differences in your pre-trip inspection. First, there's no tailpipe. Under the hood, there are two separate coolant reservoirs. This one is for the batteries, and this one here is for the bus interior. Also, you can see a radiator is still present in the Julie. You'll find other inspection items under the hood similar to a diesel bus. The steering column and gearbox are the same. Visual inspection for hoses and the front axle remains a requirement. And we recommend following the Federal Highway Administration's guide to pre-trip inspections. And of course, you have a charging port instead of a fuel port. We'll go over the details of the charging process later. Let's go over what happens when you start the Julie. When you turn the key to run, all the components of the Julie will activate. When you turn the key to start, the Julie will be engaged. And like with any electric vehicle, there's no engine noise at all. You can tell the Julie is on when you see this green vehicle light with a forward and reverse arrow on the dashboard. You may also hear a low humming noise. This is just the air compressor and nothing to worry about. At this point, the Julie is on and ready to go. Your parking brake is still set and the transmission is on neutral. The parking brake is controlled by the IntelliPark switch from Bendix. This comes standard on all Julie buses and it makes it easier for you to set and release the parking brake throughout your day. The IntelliPark switch sets the transmission to neutral when you activate it, 
which prevents the redundancy of pulling and pushing on a standard air brake PP1 valve. In order to deactivate the parking brake, you must have your foot on the service brake. Then simply push the IntelliPark switch like this to turn it off. You'll hear a rush of pressurized air. This is your brake pump coming on. Simply press the button for the gear you want to activate. When you select a gear from neutral, you'll hear the transmission shift like this. This is normal. And what you're hearing is the pneumatic shifter controlling the transmission. The power steering motor will also turn on and the ADA chimes will sound outside at the front and the rear. When the lights of this switch are off, this indicates the parking brake is off. And make sure this is the case before switching gears. When you remove your foot from the service brake, you'll hear a rapid rhythmic sound. Nothing to worry about here. This is the Hill Start Assist HSA feature, which prevents the Julie from rolling forward or backward. Once you use the accelerator pedal, the HSA will release and the bus can move. There is technically not a reverse gear. The motor simply turns the other way when you switch to reverse. Also, reverse is limited to eight miles per hour in the Julie. While driving, Regenerative power mode activates when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal. This is when the energy of the motors is redirected to charging the battery. Now, if you keep your foot off the accelerator, the bus will eventually come to a stop. After 30 seconds of being stopped in this way, the anti-rollaway feature will activate. This automatically sets the transmission to neutral and activates the parking brake. You'll notice the red LEDs of the IntelliPark switch are flashing. This is because it was activated automatically as a result of the anti-rollaway mechanism. Now, this is important. In this situation, you can't simply release the parking brake by pressing the switch the way that you normally would. You need to manually set the parking brake by pulling the switch, causing the red LEDs to glow continuously, and then you can deactivate the parking brake by putting your foot on the service brake and pressing the IntelliPark switch. Julie's factory configuration activates the rear brake lights when the driver reduces their accelerator input. A customer may turn off this feature by contacting their local dealership. To park the Julie, simply slow to a stop the way you normally would with the service brake, set the bus to neutral, and then activate the parking brake by pulling the IntelliPark switch. Then you can turn off the Julie. The IntelliPark switch LEDs will glow continuously for five minutes after the Julie is turned off. Now, let's go over the charging process for the Julie. First, inspect the charge head, making sure nothing is dirty or broken. Open the charge port door, then lift the charge port cover and plug in the charger. You should hear a click when you plug it in, and the green light next to the charging panel will start blinking rapidly. This means the charging station and the Julie are communicating. Inside on the dashboard, you'll see a yellow charging indicator light come on. You'll also notice on the IntelliPark switch that the top LED is shining continuously, while the bottom LED is blinking. After about 30 seconds, the green light next to the charging panel will blink slower. This means the Julie is being actively charged. Inside, a blinking green high voltage indicator light can be seen on the dashboard. This shows that the high voltage system is active. Uh, you can run accessories such as heating or cooling while the Julie is being charged, but of course, the drivetrain is disabled during charging. You'll also notice that both the LEDs on the IntelliPark switch are shining continuously. Eventually, the green light next to the charging panel will glow continuously green. This indicates the Julie is fully charged. Now, in order to disconnect the charger, press this red button to the left of the charge head and wait a few seconds. The green light will stop shining and the red light will shine continuously. Then you can hold the release trigger on the charge head and unplug it from the bus. When this happens, the yellow charging indicator light will turn off in the dashboard. If you're charging with the key set to off, nothing else will be illuminated on the dashboard. 
If you're charging with the key set to run, you will still see the green high voltage indicator light even when the charging stops. Check the operating manual of your charger before charging. You should be familiar with your charger features and have completed your charger training course. As a reminder, while you are charging, you cannot put the bus in gear and you cannot disable the parking brake. And now remember, the Julie has both a high voltage system and a low voltage system. The low voltage system operates all the controls and safety features of the bus, and it communicates with the high voltage system to start the bus. And this is why the Julie is equipped with a Gigavac switch. If the low voltage system were to ever drop below 11 volts of power for 60 seconds, the Gigavac switch would open its circuit, acting as a kill switch that protects the batteries. The Gigavac switch reconnects the low and high voltage systems if they're ever disconnected due to a drop in voltage levels. This is one of many ways in which the Julie is designed with safety and performance in mind. Let's go over a few scenarios that could be confusing when first encountered, but really have simple solutions. While driving, if your state of charge is above 95%, when you remove your foot from the accelerator pedal, you'll hear a chime sound from the dashboard, and you'll see a message reading, Regenerative Braking Limited. And nothing to worry about here. Regenerative braking is limited to prevent the batteries from being overcharged. Once your state of charge goes below 95%, regenerative braking will resume in its full capacity. Check your charger for proper operation prior to the charging session. Depending on your charger, it may have lights or a display screen that could indicate fault codes. These may prevent your charger from proper operation and charging. Check the LV battery disconnect switch to make sure it is in the on position. The Julie bus requires a proper level of voltage in the low voltage batteries. If you plug a charger into the bus and the lights next to the charging head glow red instead of blinking green, this might be because the charging head is not connected properly or an error has occurred. Simply unplug the charging head, wait five minutes, then reconnect it, making sure you hear a click. Then everything should start charging normally. The Julie has a safety design in which it locks the charge plug and port during a charge, which prevents disconnection during charging. If you ever find that your charger will not release from the charging port after a completed charge, contact your local dealer for instructions on how to unlock it. They will provide you with instructions on using a manual disconnect lever. Another note, if you turn on the Julie while it's still plugged into a charger, there will be a yellow charging indicator on the dashboard to remind you you're still plugged in. If this is the case, you won't be able to put the Julie in gear or release the parking brake until you've unplugged the charger. Now that you're familiar with the Julie and its various features, you're ready to hit the road in a whole new way. At Thomas Built Buses, we know that every mile matters. And with the all-electric Julie, our miles are greener safer and more promising than ever.